Hello. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, this isn't at all intimidating. Bang right up to the back there, but never mind. We'll see how we go. Uh, thanks for coming along. This talk is called Magna Neoros. Um, it's a complete nonsense. I just like to play with words a lot. Um, what it actually means, you've probably figured it out, is Zorro and Arkham, which is a uh, famous phrase from a well-known Batman story called Batman R.I.P. And the gimmick with it is uh, young Bruce Wayne asks his father, uh, seven-year-old comic spoilers here, uh, you know, what would happen if, if Zorro was in the, you know, the present day, the real world, fighting the bad guys, and he told him that they'd probably throw someone like Zorro in Arkham. Um, and it's also about what happens when, you know, you're so overwhelmed by so many bad people doing so many bad things, you know, what do you do to, to try and get out of that situation? Um, and it's pretty interesting for me because that's what a lot of us do on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, especially if you do any sort of blogging or public appearances. Um, you're, you're basically dangled in front of these people all the time and hoping that they don't, you know, they, this isn't the day where they take a pot shot. Uh, even a line on a blog can get you into legal trouble with, with an adware vendor or a spyware vendor. Um, and things can get, you know, can escalate really quickly depending on what kind of security research uh, that you're doing. Um, and in my case, this is what I was supposed to be doing because I've got a, I've got a fine art degree. Uh, I don't have any IT qualifications. I was supposed to be painting pictures and writing music. Uh, I trained in, a, in an art school to go off and draw uh, Batman comics with uh, DC, but it all went a bit wrong, as you can see. And uh, yeah, we're going to find out exactly why it went wrong because uh, it, it is a bit of a dramatic change of uh, direction for a career. Um, but a lot of people that got into InfoSec around... Uh, 2005 to 2007 came to it in a very gonzo fashion. Um, you know, the, the people who set up uh, uh, Bill Pitlavani's Wind Patrol program, he, he, he used to take photographs and he realized that there was, this, there was this spyware problem and nobody was really doing anything about it. Uh, the AV companies couldn't really keep up with it. Uh, so, so he set up Wind Patrol. It's the same for uh, Sunbelt software, the people who put that together. Uh, spyware, uh, spyware Guide, well-known security blog and their X-Cleaner tool. Uh, that was a bunch of guys in West Virginia uh, that realized there was, there was a niche there that wasn't being filled by the traditional security vendors. Um, so, you know, I went from really horrifically dated 90s, terrible, terrible fashion and painting pictures to winding up Homeland Security and hoping they found it funny enough not to shoot me. Uh, they didn't, thankfully. Um, but how, you know, how did, how did such a weird, odd, strange career transition come about? Uh, well, the answer is it, it started with MSN Messenger, funnily enough, back, uh, you know, around 99, 98. Um, and, you know, the, the web at that point was still, you know, if you, if you were there at the time, it was all weird and fresh and new and wonderful. And uh, quickly started talking to people all over the place. And I fell in with a, a, a lady who was all about these Hong Kong movies. She used to write Hong Kong movie reviews. I uh, had enough friends. And this, this is a quite horrifically designed blog, but they all look like this at the time, so that's fine. It's allowed. Uh, so I jumped on board, and I started helping out writing these blogs with her. Um, but she, it turned out that she was in quite a bad uh, personal situation. Uh, she'd fallen in with a lot of really bad people. Um, and you know, I'm not going to go into too much details because I don't really want to give away too much about her. Uh, but she, she'd get taken along to all sorts of dodgy dealings by effectively criminals. Uh, the guy that was in charge of this little, not very merry band of men used to take her along to sort of uh, dodgy deals, uh, things involving drugs, guns, all sorts of horrible things. Um, this is on the other side of the globe. And uh, you know, she was she was in a really precarious situation and. Um, I wanted to try and get it out of this, so I thought, well, okay, what, what's, what's the probably the most guaranteed to crash and burn idea that I could come up with to try and get it out of this mess? Uh, so the plan was to do a teach English as a foreign language qualification uh, down in London, pass that, uh, go off to Japan, and then get it out of this place, uh, get it cleaned up, get everything sorted out, and then she could go on her, on her way. Uh, Unfortunately, it didn't pan out like that. This is one of the letters from one of the schools. Uh, some of the schools thought I was trying to apply to be a student, which didn't really help. I was trying to go there to be a teacher, so that one fell through. This one, uh, they were going to send me to, they, they had uh, 
a long-term renovation coming up, so I couldn't do that one either. And the final school that actually did accept me managed to burn down to the ground about three weeks after saying, yep, come on over. Uh, and I was pretty much at the airport when he said, no, go back home. So, uh, you know, we were trying to work out what to do, and I talked to her on IM a lot. And because this guy was always around in the flat, uh, we'd, we'd use keywords. So, uh, you know, it's a similar thing to what people do now when they're in sort of abusive relationships and they're, they're, they're told by these uh, helper orgs to, you know, use keywords, use safe words, pretend to be people you're not. Uh, so we, we, when this guy was around, I'd pretend to be, you know, Susan or Sophie or some other person, a friend from the beach or in a city, whatever. And then when he wasn't around, we'd, we'd talk normally. Um, so it went on like this for a while. And then one day we were talking and uh, he, he was around, so, you know, I was pretending to be Sophie, whoever. And then all of this chat text started to come up on the screen, uh, like old conversation text from, from way back. And it was exactly the kind of thing that you wouldn't really want this guy to see uh, if he was in the vicinity. And of course, he was basically standing behind her when all this stuff started to pop up. And he wasn't stupid. And he put two and two together. And she went offline. And you know, I was pretty frantic. And this is, this is before Skype and you know, phoning people thousands of miles away without running up massive phone bills. So I had no idea what had happened. Um, a couple of weeks later, one of the friends who I knew sort of briefly from the, the, the movie blog told me that uh, basically this guy had seen all this stuff come up and basically beat it up pretty badly. Um, and after that point, he, put, you know, he basically put it on a really short leash, I guess, if you like, and wouldn't let her out of his sight. And she stopped replying to emails. She didn't come on instant messaging. Uh, she didn't write letters anymore, and she basically just vanished, and I didn't know what happened to her. Um, and that was all because of this, this, this idiot that had decided to pop all this stuff up. I mean, I didn't know this at the time. Um, so, you know, that, that was kind of bad, uh, putting it mildly. And then I went off uh, to sort of clear my head, went off to China, uh, briefly managed to get myself kidnapped in Hong Kong on my first day of arrival. Uh, that's, that's another story for another time. Uh, ended up in the mainland, which also wasn't a good idea. And it was, it was basically far cry at this point. I had no idea where I was. I didn't know, I, I still don't know where this place is. Uh, I basically lived in an alleyway uh, and slept in, a, in an abandoned World War II bunker thing for a while. Uh, but in the middle of the, this complete middle of nowhere place, there were a whole bunch of people with computers and tech, really advanced stuff, and they were all into hacking and all the rest of it. And, you know, put, uh, I'd already put two and two together and worked out that someone had hacked this PC that she was on, and I wanted to learn more about it, because I didn't, I didn't have a clue. Um, and they started to teach me some of this stuff. They, they started to teach me how people infect these PCs. I mean, it sounds really basic and crude now, but at the time it was really cutting edge, you know. Uh, they, they showed me how this stuff gets on computers, how people control them, uh, the, the kind of things they can do, the kind of things you can do to remove them from the PCs. And that kind of stuck with me. And I, I sort of had this idea, well, okay, when I get back to England, I'm going to set up a blog and I'm going to write about these bad people and do what I can to start taking them down and, you know, all the rest of it. And then I thought, well, hang on, I, I need a kind of a semi-decent internet name, uh, I can't just, you know, come on, horny guy for you, 42 at AOL is going to take down the bad guys. Um, but I used to do a lot of stuff with the, the, the Chinese cinema, and I used to do a lot of artwork related to stuff, uh, like Chinese mythology and all the rest of it. And while I was over there, uh, they, they, they did a uh, Hungry Ghosts Festival. I was over there in, in rural China when they did this, and I'd never seen one of these before. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically the, the, the gates of hell basically burst open, and all the, you know, the, their ancestors come out for a while. And depending on which part of Asia you're in, uh, they will either be a bit grumpy or incredibly nasty ghost things uh, and if you don't feed them, if you don't burn this paper money, uh, they get very angry and, you know, they might get up to mischief, they might burn your village to the ground. Apparently some of them throw babies in rivers and things like that, which is a bit, bit, bit extreme for me. Um, but I, I, there was something in there, so, oh, okay, well, they, they, they burn this paper, uh, the ghost paper. Oh, paper ghost, brilliant, I've got, my, I've got my cool, unique username thing. Now I need to go off and set up a blog and take down all these bad people. Uh, which is a lot more difficult than coming up with a username, but anyway. Uh, I came back, I, I did a lot of self-teaching and things like that. I got set up on a lot of grassroots forums. Uh, I don't know if anyone remembers sites like Spyware, Warrior, Castle Cops. Uh, Bleeping Computers, one of the few that's still around, actually. They, they do a lot of stuff now with ransomware and all the rest of it. And train myself to remove these infections manually. Um, 
work out who was who, who the AdWare vendors were, and all the rest of it. And I was just blogging in my spare time. Um, and then com completely by chance, I started writing about things that, that started getting into the press. I had no idea if, if these were you know, important or complete nonsense. I just, I just wrote about them, and they kept getting in the press, and some security companies got interested, and eventually I, I got hired by uh, FaceTime. Um, they changed the name of that. They sold it to Apple, I guess, for lots and lots of money. Um, but that's, that's basically how I got started, and I had a knack for finding these, these scams and tools that, that were all about exploitation and taking advantage of people. So this thing was from about 2005, and this is a Yap browser, and this was a web browser that you could download, install on your PC, looked perfectly normal. Uh, it came bundled with Zango AdWare, but other than that, you know, it seemed fine until you, you loaded it up, tried to load up a web page, and it immediately redirected you to illegal pornography, um, which was not so good. And this, this, this exploded in the press, and before I knew it, I had uh, all, these, all these Russian servers with all these documents related to it and how they did it and uh, the way they redirected you when you hit a web page. Uh, a lot of this was probably related to some of the cool web search guys. I don't know if anyone remembers those. Uh, God, this is ancient. Um, but but the, you know, I kept stumbling into these things, uh, the, the, these horrible, nasty tools, and then I, you know, I got this thing shut down. Uh, I got the websites pulled offline. The adware company were panicking and all the rest of it. Uh, and from that point on, everything I seemed to find seemed to be in this sort of general realm. Um, so I, I basically went with it uh, for a couple of years and you know, worked on everything from instant messaging to you know, peer to peer stuff, uh, video game hacks, uh, a lot of adware vendors. Here's creepy Russian chap emailing me to tell me uh, he didn't, he, you know, he'd lost track of his installation base and you know, PS were going to kill you and various other wonderful things. That was great. Uh, and so, you know, I, I carried on working in that vein for a couple of years, um, and then I ran into someone called Triple Zero. I'm sorry, it's the worst internet handle I've ever heard. Apologies if anyone here is called Triple Zero, in which case it's brilliant. Um, but I kept coming across these websites and these tools that were, were very disruptive, and they were all focused around humiliation and taking advantage and uh, taking advantage of support sites, because back, you know, nine, ten years ago, uh, if, if you... If you, if you were feeling suicidal, if you had a problem, if uh, you had a drug addiction, if you were in an abusive relationship. There weren't that many organizations around that could help. There weren't that many websites that could do much about it. Um, but the, a lot of these things gravitated to MySpace. There were piles and piles of support groups and help groups on MySpace uh, where people could go. It was a safe environment. They could talk to people, get help. You know, it's a pretty good thing, I think. Um, but a lot of these websites were all focused on, on attacking these, these really useful sources of information. And I tracked it back to a ring of, I thought, maybe four or five websites where all of this stuff was just endlessly coming from. Uh, and they had somewhere between, I don't know, maybe 300, 400 to two, 3,000 people registered per forum. Um, so here's, here's shots of uh, the five main ones. And on, across all of the websites, the one main constant was this person called Triple Zero. Uh, they were a, a moderator on uh, four of them and an owner of one of them. I can't remember which one they were an owner of now, but they were an owner of one of these things. But all of, all of the, the pipelines, all of the maybe you should do this, maybe you should send that file here, maybe you should attack that forum like this, always came back to this individual. Uh, and they seem to be using mules, I guess, to, to funnel a lot of this stuff over to MySpace and back and forth. So you had this strange pipeline of garbage uh, coming from these hacker sites, these forums, going to MySpace where, where dedicated trolls and not very nice people were, were, were just raining hell down on these people trying to get help for problems. Um, and, you know, I've been looking into this person and a lot of the stuff they were posting up to this point was kind of, you know, no, it, it didn't really catch my attention that much. But then I came across this uh, post your best hacks um, type page. So people are posting stuff in there. It's all fairly, fairly generic. And then he pops up with this. Uh, I've been doing fishing. I've been hacking PCs. Years ago, I'd sit on chats in MSN and mess with the blah, 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 open up browsers, paste their chat back at them. I'm sure you can already see it at the bottom there. Uh, and I hack websites. And here's a couple of examples. And of course, here is my friend's blog uh, that, it, that this person had defaced. Uh, a couple of choice swear words have blanked out at the, the, the middle right there. Um, and I think, no, no, surely not. Um, but the more I thought about this, uh, you know, this, this is ridiculous. This, this person's gone about, you know, literally cutting and pasting chat text from MSN and posting them in. And, and oh, oh, also, coincidentally, here's this person's website uh, that I knew. 
And then, you know, here's some chats I ripped from hack computers, blah, blah, blah. None of these were, were any of our chats. Um, but, you know, <laughs> there, 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 there was, I've never been able to prove this to this day, but I mean, come on, this, this is fairly suspicious looking. Uh, and it kind of tipped me over the edge, really. I wasn't very happy about this at all. Um, so I set about basically trying to take down as many of these sites, individuals, related forums and portals, the tools, everything as possible. Um, so this is about mid-2007. mid, mid 2007. Um, And then it just got worse. Lol, I got a priest with meat spin. I mean, admittedly, that might be a bit funny, I guess. Uh, and then, you know, on the right there, a lot of stolen webcam shots. This was a guy that was basically, sorry, you know, they'd pop it up on screen. He saw he was on his webcam. And the guy's typing all this chat text on the left there to him. And he, he basically picked his nose for five minutes and then switched it off like a champ. Uh, so that was pretty impressive. But, you know, there, there were so many bad things like this. Uh, and then he used these things for blackmailing people and insulting people. It was just, it was disgraceful, really. Um, they had really sophisticated phishing schemes. So these aren't as popular now, but at the time, uh, the, the, the picture on the top left there, this is, this is basically a sort of web ring for adverts. So a, a sort of advert marketplace. So you, you get your website, you set up a website, you plunk it on there. Uh, and then you can pay for the kind of ads you want. And those ads get filtered out across the, all of the networks or chosen parts of the network. So you might get your ads out on the networking bit, the tech bit, uh, the, the fluffy bunny bit, uh, what have you. And then you can see the ads at the bottom there. Uh, where can I find these ads? These are the most traffic ones. They were all MySpace fishes. So they, they'd roll these MySpace fishes out in adverts across these, these targeted networks, um, specifically ones where they might think people aren't quite as, you know, technically advanced to be able to spot these officials. And then they'd go onto MySpace, post up more links, and then they'd use these accounts to, to crap flood or troll or post gore pictures or horrible images to the, the support forums. Uh, the, the lady on the bottom left there, uh, she was from Indian, Indonesia, I think. Uh, and she was, she was one of the people on one of these forums that was behind these particular fish uh, pages. And of course, the, the, the web host on the ad network was fake. She owned it. It wasn't a real web host at all. And, and then typically on the right there, you'd send the, the complaint report, uh, you know, please take these down. They're on your hosting. And it would just be ignored. Um, again, there's, there's a lot more sophisticated ways to get these things taken offline now. But at the time, this is you know, it's basically stone age. Uh, so I thought, well, okay, there's, there's, there's five primary hubs. There's three to five extra sites per mod. Uh, each one of those specializing in something else. They're all using bulletproof or really shady host, and uh, all of these hosts are coming from somewhere. So I thought, okay, there's, there's too many sites for me to handle. I'm going to have to set up some sort of database. So uh, my database at this point was basically a notepad file. Uh, not very sophisticated, but anyway. Uh, I waited and waited, picked up information on the sites, who ran what, which site was hosted where, and then basically over the course of a couple of days or weeks started to take all of these things down in batches to, to you know, let them know that something was going on. So you know, all my sites are gone and my account's canceled. I haven't seen person X all day. Did they get owned or something? Did this hosting get shut down? Uh, what happened to person Y? Why have they left? Because he broke a rule and got caught. Uh, this person was doing something illegal. It's gone. What is going on? He hasn't come online all day. Uh, where's the forum gone? I need a link. Anyone here? I thought it was fun. Yes, I was like you. Police came, so I was bleh. What a quote. Uh, the guy on the top right was particularly panicked. Goodbye forever. I was going to close this down, but some noobs with no life hacked this forum. No one hacked the forum. They're just panicking at this point. Uh, you can join that blah, 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 or whatever his name is. Uh, I love the closer. You will not be able to talk to me either if you have me on MSN. Goodbye. He's, he's gone. He's, he's taken the first plane to the North Pole. Um, and, you know, I had, I had, by the end of the week, I had hundreds of these things, people going bananas because all these sites were getting taken down and shut down. But then they keep coming back. So, you know, this guy got his friend to set him up with a working cPanel. Um, they thought it was hacking content. It wasn't true. But on the bright side, they gave me a full refund of 200 pounds. Brilliant. And so, you know, some of them were right back at it. And no matter how hard you're trying to take a lot of these, the, the five main portals down, they wouldn't go away. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm working out what to do next with these things. And someone sends me an anonymous tip, because one of my websites, you know, people could send me stuff anonymously. And I've been blogging about these sites, but without revealing the, the names. Um, but obviously, someone somewhere is going to recognize some of these at some point. And it turned out one of the websites was dedicated to gaming scams and hacks. And this person had, had gone on there, uh, got in touch with support, and said, you know, I, they sent me a link to a fish. Um, 
I, I nearly clicked it, what are you going to do? And they were like, well, you need to contact the owner of the site. We can't do anything about it. It's the owner's responsibility. Um, uh, you know, we just sell these tools to the customers. We have a very liberal policy. Uh, therefore, we allow any type of content that you as the owner feels acceptable. This, of course, does not include highly illegal things. So, you know, they're, they're okay with mostly illegal, but just not highly illegal. Um, and then they just basically bailed and, and exited the session. So now um, I had some sort of lifeline to try and get these things shut down because this guy was basically behind all of these hubs, all of these portals, all of these forums. Uh, the main, the main, I mean, this, again, this would be a lot more straightforward to do now because it just is. This is 10 years back, uh, as good as, and it was, it was incredibly difficult to do at the time. Um, but by this point, I'd worked my way up on the forums. What I was doing previously, I had a whole bunch of burner accounts, and I would go onto not well known hacking websites, and I would lift screenshots of their hacks and their tools and all the rest of it, and just basically claim they were mine. And oh, look what I've done now, and rose my way up through the ranks. So eventually, I got in with one of the, the owners of one of the forums, um, and I asked them, look, I, you know, I said, I, I know the guy that, that, that runs all of this. If you let me know the, the name of the support person involved, I can, I can ask them. Uh, not to hassle you anymore. Um, and it was basically a last throw of the dice, and I didn't for a million years expect this to work because it was pretty stupid. But as it turned out, he came right up and said, yeah, his name's this, and, and he told me to do it. Um, so, oh, brilliant, wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna jump in the chat now. Um, now, prior to this, I'd sent the, one of the reps for this, this company uh, a list of 38 topics with all sorts of garbage in them. Uh, to see if the form would go down or if they just removed the 38 threads. So sure enough, they just removed the 38 threads and carried on going. Um, so I basically ranted at this guy for a while, gave him a screenshot, said, look, I've got proof. I know you did this. I've got your name from this guy. Uh, I also know that you did this on Saturday because here's a screenshot of you doing it. Uh, what are you going to do? Um, and I just lost it by this point. I was like, look, you've got, you've got 60 minutes. I'm sending all, this, all of this onto the feds, the local surfier area, and your upstream provider. Now, if anyone here is involved in phishing takedowns, uh, you'll know if, if you go upstream to get something taken down, it's kind of like yelling fire to some degree uh, in, a, in a crowded theater. It's, it's like, you know, it's the last resort you want to do because they get quite grumpy if you do this. Um, so I said, right, look, you've got 60 minutes. All of this is going to everybody either way. Take the thing down now or this is going to look really bad. So I posted that at, uh, what time's that? 3 p.m., went away, had some food, and he hadn't replied, went away, did something else, still hadn't replied, uh, 10 to 4, still nothing. And then literally a couple of seconds before 4 o'clock, uh, he posted the link and all of the sites had gone bang. Literally every single site that was in that ring, all of the forums, all of the, the hosted files, all of it just went uh, and none of it came back and they were, they were basically gone and that was it. Uh, great. Um, but this guy kept popping up on all of these forums. I'm not going to name them, but there was, there was, you know, all of these files were coming from somewhere. All of this stuff was being ferried back and forth across these sites to MySpace and back again. And this guy caught my attention because he was, he was uh, part of a, a dedicated troll group on MySpace that would go in, post all sorts of gory images and bad things and hack websites to these support groups. Um, so yeah, the MySpace connection. Uh, my God, we're going back in time now. So this guy, would, this guy would create and distribute lots of MySpace hacking tools. So this is a, uh, a MySpace email ripper and cracker. What a concept. Uh, and again, they would use these, these accounts to post more garbage on more, more places, more support forums. Um, this thing was called the MySpace Lottery. Uh, a lot of the support groups wised up to the fact that obviously if you make your group private, they can no longer go in there and cause problems. Uh, this tool basically allowed you to stick a random group ID in, hit the go button, and it would take you to a, uh, a private forum, if you like, and get you in. So even though the forum was locked, even though it was private, you could just use this, jump into a random support forum, and then cause mayhem. Uh, and they couldn't do anything about this. Uh, it took MySpace a while to get this thing shut down. So these were the kinds of, you know, pretty clever custom build tools that they were making just to aggravate people, you know. Um, this thing, uh, again, you know, they would, they would use code. They would paste code into people's profiles. And then if you visited the profile while logged into MySpace, it would automatically subscribe you to uh, their video channel. So this caused lots of problems for law enforcement because at the time, uh, police on MySpace were, were a big thing. They were a popular thing. Uh, they would 
uh, you know, use their real profile because it was like, you know, officer, what's his face is on the job where we're looking after you, everybody, hooray, put me in your friends list. Um, but a lot of the time, the, the, the police would use their accounts to, to, you know, investigate dodgy people on MySpace while still logged in. Uh, and nothing says delete your account and burn your computer like 15 policemen showing up in your subscribed video list. So these, these things were causing major, major problems all across the board uh, for everyone from law enforcement to uh, the support groups. Uh, and again, this one took a while to shut down. Uh, and this guy got, got greedy because he started to think he was, you know, king of the hackers. And he went around uh, compromising all sorts of websites, forums, mainly gaming sites, uh, posting up his nonsense everywhere. But he got really, really sloppy. And he, he, uh, one, one of his hacks he left is MSN address, uh, username, if you like, on one of these accounts. Uh, that had been compromised, so it was easy enough to bring him up on MSN and see his real name and his school address, uh, his university address, sorry, on, on, on his profile. Uh, well done. And uh, he, he also hacked another website, a gaming portal, uh, that uh, he'd, he'd done without using a VPN. So, of course, the admin had posted up his IP and a bunch of other stuff. And on top of that, he'd been hassling a, uh, a Democrats group uh, on MySpace, there was like an official Democrats group, and he got really, really lippy to a lady that, the, 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 that was responsible for this. Uh, and, and sure enough, uh, she, she went straight to the FBI with all of the reams of information on them that, that were all over the internet, uh, so much for the tolerant left and so on. Uh, yeah, it's a bad meme. Um, and, and this guy got into all sorts of trouble. Uh, I may be going to jail, I'm so scared right now. Uh, you all know how you got limited abilities. I tried getting past these, someone on high got word of it. From what I know, I have 100 felony charges against me. I have to return my whatever tomorrow. I'm so scared and I don't know what to do. But if I disappear and stop replying, at least you'll know why. Uh, yeah, see ya. Uh, Dang, yo, just pray, just pray. Yep, I agree, just pray. This, this went very, very, very badly for him. Um, really spectacularly badly. So now this guy that was the main uh, contributor to, to, to pushing all of this garbage from, from the hacking forums to the MySpace page, because the, 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 the two groups that were involved in this, they didn't really cross over that much. All the, the, the sort of hackery type people uh, stayed on those forums. All the MySpace trolls and all the rest of it stayed on their forum. Um, so effectively, you know, it went bang. Uh, so all the sites on the left had gone. Uh, all the people on MySpace could no longer get up to mischief. Uh, and they weren't very happy. Uh, this guy wrote basically a big pile of text all about me, what he was going to do, how much he hated me, how much he didn't like me. He despised my art degree. He didn't like my art references. He also hated comics. He liked my photography, apparently, but everything else he hated. And it wasn't long before he was going on about Timothy McVeigh and all sorts of under other wonderful things. So that was, uh, that was very cheerful. Um, so that was on the 17th of October. And then a new challenger appears. This person pops up in one of the troll groups. Uh, send profage. Anyone interested in doing something about this guy, hit me up. Send me a PM. Amazing. They're all DMs now, but back, back in the olden days, it was PMs. And I'll drop you a link. Uh, it's time to, spring, time to spring a few traps. And of course, at this point, all of the people would know where to go on the forums, had all actually gravitated to these MySpace places, with no idea what they were doing, because they didn't really use it. They just wanted to you know, feel somewhere where, where they, they weren't getting hassled all the time. Uh, oh, wow, someone called me a dweeb. Phenomenal. Uh, so all of a sudden, this forum really got popular. Uh, you know, in a couple of days, it was two registered users, 38, 110, uh, 210, 328. I stopped counting at that point. Um, so, so this forum became very, very popular. And it only had four sections on it. Uh, the game, Intel, forum takedowns, and tools of the trade. Uh, let's see, the text is not great to read. 306 registered users at that point. Uh, most users ever online was 134. And this was all for me. How nice. Um, is this thing on? Uh, oh, the, the horror, he begins with, a, with an art of war quote. Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, they're going to milk a lull's cow and stop him breaking our toys in the most effective way imaginable because our friends made a fatal mistake, which you'll soon see, and that's why we're here to watch him dance. Uh, I've been set a number of tasks, and anyone who wishes to help is free to get involved. It's time to get the ball rolling. I've already put out word to owners of the sites he's taken down, and I see some of you from those boards are already here, uh, so start spreading the word. And that was on the 9th of October, 2008. Um, so the first thing this person did, 
uh, with another art of war quote, uh, told everybody to start sending the files to a, a secure drop-off point because basically they didn't want all of these sites, all of the, the tools that they had, the fish kits, everything else to go bang because once those sites went originally, it was all gone. They couldn't get anything back. Uh, it's not really like anyone in these circles was, was backing anything up in 2008, 2009, whatever. Um, so they didn't want to lose it all. So, you know, kill, kill the extension, zip it all up, plonk it in here so, so it's not getting flagged by anyone. Um, oh, brother. Because unfortunately, I made one mistake. I stuck my brother in as my top friend on MySpace. I should have rolled with Tom. Unfortunately, I went with Wiles. Never mind. Uh, there he is. And unfortunately, I don't read the comments. I don't read the comments on my blogs. I don't read the comments on forums. I barely read the comments on Twitter. And I certainly don't read comments on MySpace because if you remember comments on MySpace, you'll be, be aware that they were complete garbage. So uh, a few days before all this kicked off, he'd gone and posted this. Hey, check out my website I made. I've got a lot of new stuff on it, blah, blah, blah. Here's the link. See you soon. Thanks, bro. Uh, and here's this hideous website complete with broken images and a lot of nonsense. Uh, wow, that looks retro. Um, so, you know, here's the website. So they, they've gone trawling through this website. They've seen uh, all of his terrible photos. They've seen the dog pictures, because he used to like throwing up lots of dog pictures. Uh, there's Tanuki there. Uh, we didn't have many pictures of this thing, but um, he'd, he'd actually gone and found some uh, from the attic and plunked them online. Uh, there's me at the bottom with whatever that small creature thing is. I don't know what it looks like a dog, I'm not sure. Uh, and where it all went wrong was that he linked up this work stuff page because he used to do a lot of amateur web design and everything else uh, and built a lot of sites. Um, pretty good with databases. And of course, the mistake we've got here is that he made a database for his brother at and linked to it uh, along with the shopping portal and all the rest. Uh, oops. Because this database uh, was my database that I needed help fleshing out from the notepad file to something a bit more robust. Uh, my French is terrible. I'll give it a go. Ceci ne pas un database. I've no idea how you say database in French, but that was kind of close and passable, so we'll roll with it. So, you know, login page. Well, okay, no problem if they've got that. Uh, whatever, you know, they'd still have to guess it. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize that he'd gone and left a hint in, you know what's coming next, Oh, there we go. Best dog. Can we guess who the best? No, Tanuki, you are a bad dog. A bad dog. Naughty dog. North out of 10. Uh, so, of course, in they went, and they now had access to 50-plus pages. I think it was 60, 70, I don't know, of, of everything, literally everything, not, not just like the, the, the black hats, the, the adware guys, uh, dodgy Russian uh, cracker groups like the, the app browser people, lots of stuff on cool web search, things that you really wouldn't want to get out in public. Um, they had access to the lot, so, you know, oops. Uh, so here's, here's a, a, a small screenshot of one of them. So you can see it's, it's pretty straightforward, you know, basic data, sites, files, associates, and it's just a way of building up a picture of all of these people. Um, so then they went on to burst some pipelines. Uh, another Art of War quote, wonderful. Uh, he, he decided to take out a lot of the forums that I was actually using for Intel uh, because I was actually getting a lot of information. I've always got a lot of information from lots of various websites out there on people that you know, need some inf information gathering on them. So they had the idea to go after these websites, find out who's there, get over there, register on these things, start talking to people. Uh, some helpful advice, don't use VPNs or proxies. I don't know if this is the same now, but back then, they had lots and lots of problems with spammers. Uh, so hilariously, a lot of these hacker forums told people, don't use VPNs, don't use proxies, uh, we won't let you log in. Of course, this had the added benefit that when these things inevitably got hacked or compromised, or you know, uh, someone just decided to steal a database, or the, the, you know, the police showed up at 4 a.m., all of their actual login information, their IP addresses and everything else, were, were all there in the, you know, the back end. Um, I don't think people do that anymore. Uh, don't mention the site, obviously. Don't use any handle you've registered here or any email address. Keep it all fresh. Uh, no denial of service because it's a waste of time. Admin accounts are the key. Uh, add your alt accounts to this spreadsheet so we're not owning ourselves or wasting time needlessly, which makes sense. Uh, it doesn't really work if they're all attacking each other and phishing each other, so there we go. Um, 23rd of October there. So here's, here's the the the... the 
the link dump, I guess, that they send, he sent them to. Uh, these are like three or four websites that I, I you know, use for info and all the rest of it. So they, they picked the top three, top four, and all flooded to these sites uh, en masse, and off they went. Um, and it didn't take them long because, of course, one of the admins uh, had reused passwords across uh, email accounts and one of the forums. So quite quickly, all these sites uh, were hammered. Uh, they, they deleted the member list on one of them. Uh, they grabbed the, the domain password for all access. Uh, all of the, the forum threads were sort of deleted but replaced with nonsense and so on and so forth. So uh, they gained access to my database, grabbed a copy, deleted the web version. They'd now taken down all of my intel uh, gathering abilities from all of these other places that I was relying on to get more information on who they were. So that wasn't good. Banking on it. Another Art of War quote, phenomenal. So now, yeah, we've grabbed everything from his database and deleted the original, forced him to hack his friends in a roundabout fashion, his brother spinning like a top, torched most of the sites giving him and others info. Now it's time to finish with a flourish. We're gonna access his bank manager's account, thanks to his brother, send it on, and then have him forward the money to me. Once, the cash is, once I have the cash, it's gone, and he's looking a lot like a money mule. Yes, they were gonna money mule me. Um, I need some volunteers, and I'll be handpicking the ones who've been doing the best work. If you're up for this, keep an eye on your mailbox, and you'll have a message by tomorrow morning. So this is 14th of November, 2008. So this was all very exciting. My brother's wonderful website again, uh, the comments book, leave a comment, uh, alongside the wonderful cheap jeans and watches spam, and someone telling him the website was nice, there was someone telling him, we've got a few problems with the back end, please give me a call on this phone number, and an email address, and of course the email address was a bank's email address, and the phone number was his, so that's how they came up with this whole idea. It's going well, this, isn't it? Uh, so, of course, this is a shot from inside this guy's uh, PC. Um, kind of bare bones. And they, they, they basically wandered on in into his computer uh, with a bit of social engineering, um, grabbed this stuff file. What a word, stuff. And of course, that file had all sorts of passwords and logins and all sorts of other things. And of course, rather stupidly, the login to his bank account. Uh, so that wasn't very clever. Um, so of course, here comes this email now that they've compromised his, his webmail. And I didn't know that this was going on. Uh, I had a suspicion what was going on. But this is an email from the, 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 you know, his bank manager to me, uh, who he was, my brother was doing some work for. So, uh, Chris, uh, I need to get this money to Wiles ASAP for services rendered, but I'm having problems sending him the money from my account. I uh, hope you don't mind, but he gave me your account info, and I've sent the money to your, to your way already. Uh, please try and get it to him at, and then, of course, Here's uh, Prophase's uh, bank account, address, routing number, account number, the amount, which was uh, 1,998 1, and 86 cents. Credit to, thanks, blah, blah, blah. So uh, at this point, I was kind of running out of options, really, because uh, I knew that they had this huge database of stuff. They were going to spill it all over the web or give it to people that really shouldn't have access to it. They'd taken down my ability to get intel on anybody. Um, they basically compromised my brother quite thoroughly, all his online accounts and everything else. Then they compromised this guy, a whole other bunch of other people. Uh, so I didn't really have much choice at this point. Uh, so yeah, leading a mule to water. Uh, person X came up with the goods, deposit sent. I'll let you be the one to send him the your something message and then get the money moving to me. Uh, actually, no, change my mind. You can all email him at and then they gave him my email address. Uh, so they, you know, I woke up to lots of wonderful emails the next morning, uh, and they were all very cheerful. Uh, yeah, this has gone really, really badly, unfortunately. So there we are, $1,998.86, which I've now sent on to Prophage, because I didn't really have much of a choice at this point, and now I'm an actual, honest-to-goodness money mule. Game over, really, at this point. Uh, I've had it. Um, and they were only going to toy with me for so long before really sticking the boot in. Um, 
All good things must come to an end. Uh, game over by Semprophage. Well, here we are, lots of fun, but now it has to end. I promised you a big reveal, and here it is. Who likes anagrams? Oh, mysterious. See, I've really had quite a kicking at this point, and it hasn't really gone very well since I took down all of those forums. Uh, it, it's gone about as badly as it could do, really. I've had lots of hundreds and hundreds of angry, screaming people, not very pleased about the way things have gone, and they've really taken their, their proverbial pound of flesh. Uh, but what if? Wiles, you see, Wiles has got a bit of a weird name. It's a medieval name. Uh, it's a medieval occupational name. And it's involved in mechanical fish trapping, specifically really slippery, fishy eels. Um, Cessina Pezun database. Well, it's, I didn't pronounce it correctly. I don't care. It's obviously lifted from the famous painting of the pipe. This is not a pipe. Uh, they all had a good laugh because, you know, our background, oh, he likes silly paintings of pipes. But the thing about this painting of a pipe that everybody forgets is the actual name of the painting, which isn't, you know, this is not a pipe. The actual name of this painting is The Treachery of Images. Now, Keep in mind that poor old Tanuki here was the, the key to the door of all my databases, my accounts, my brother's accounts, and everything else. Um, what if that wasn't Tanuki? What if this thing was Tanuki? What if Tanuki was actually uh, a sort of really crazy Japanese uh, raccoon dog thing that really likes to drink a lot of wine, uh, do weird things with fake bills and accounts, uh, and is a bit of a, a, a trickster and likes disguises. Good old Tanuki, uh, what a guy. Uh, what if the database really wasn't a database? What if the database was actually 60 plus pages of stock photo images and complete garbage information? What if the web ring wasn't actually a web ring? What if the web ring was a completely generic website with a bunch of randomly stolen uh, banner images plonked on there with fake votes and all the rest of it. And actually, most of the people populating those forums were bots and uh, other works of complete fiction. What if adding your alts to this spreadsheet so we're not owning ourselves or wasting time needlessly was actually a really clever way of turning one piece of data point on a person to multiple pieces of data points, and I could now tie lots of usernames and all sorts of other stuff across the board from usernames to forums to email addresses, you name it, it's in there. What if this person wasn't sending money for me to send it to someone else? What if this person was actually just sending money to themselves? What if someone had just literally posted up a screenshot of somebody sending themselves some money? Fancy that. What if all of these appalling art of war quotes were actually kind of cluing people into the possibility that they might have just had the biggest mind job of their lives pulled on them in recent memory? I don't know. It is quite possible. What if you looked at uh, Prophase's forum here? You can't really see it very well there. But down here, there's a bunch of pictures which kind of look like uh, upside down Batman pointy hat things if you turn it upside down. What if they bothered to look up the word prophage and realize that it's something that attains its real form inside the host and is a bit of an imitator? Well, who likes anagrams? Oops. Yeah, it was me. It was me. I'm sorry. Uh, Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, God, no, not going to lie. Feeling this in the morning, good game. Dead. Well, kind of walked into that one. Activating seven proxies was, 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 was a good one at the bottom there. I like that one. That was good. Uh, my my, my all-time favorite was this guy. Is this bad? Yes. Yes, this is quite bad. This is quite spectacularly bad. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is possibly a 15. I don't know. Um, so at this point, I didn't really know what was going to happen. I, I just basically took all these people out of this sandbox and threw all of them into another sandbox, played them for, I think it was two, three months, I don't know. They basically existed in this completely fictitious world of nonsense, and they thought they were doing all this really clever stuff. It was garbage. Everything they did was complete and utter garbage, uh, and all they were doing was constantly handing me information. Uh, of course, Wiles doesn't exist. I don't have a brother, and I never had a dog called Tanuki. Uh, I, I did have a pet monkey, but he wasn't called Tanuki. Um, 
But yeah, the reaction was kind of weird because after the initial, oh God, we're doomed, and lots of people basically torched all of their accounts never to return, a lot of the people here uh, actually thought the whole thing was hilarious or, or actually really kind of enjoyed it. Uh, and in a weird sort of osmosis process kind of thing, uh, a lot of them found the idea of taking down websites, bad websites, taking down fishers, removing scammers, uh, you know, to, to be kind of appealing. So I actually had a lot of people that was actually, could you, could you, you know, could you teach me a bit more? Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to learn more about this. This is actually really cool. Um, so, you know, the aftermath of all this is that I managed to take down all of these terrible websites and forums that people were doing really quite bad things on. Uh, when it all started to erupt with people going on about Timothy McVeigh and me, which I'd really rather they didn't, uh, I, I basically threw out all of these fake identities, profiles, forums, databases that I'd been sitting on for a long, long time for, the, for this exact eventuality. Um, and basically threw on the brakes. Most of them vanished. Some of them carried on learning. I believe some of them who, who stuck around and you know uh, picked up some more information from me on how to do it, where to go, how to learn about this stuff, still working in for a second now, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, if you're in here, please don't hit me. I would appreciate that. Um, so you know, I mean, uh, uh, this, this ended as well as it probably could have ended, I think. Um, and that is what happens when you stick Zorro in Arkham. Um, Thank you. <laughs> questions? I'm happy if there's no questions because I can barely speak anymore. But... Oh, God, we've got one. Okay. How long did it take to set all that up? Oh, my goodness. Uh... <laughs> It took, it took quite a while, but you know, while I was doing my regular security stuff, the question, in case you didn't hear, was how long did it take to set it all up? Um, I'd, I'd been working in InfoSec full-time from about 2005-ish, 2006-ish, and I always had an idea that something like this was going to happen eventually, and I'd seen security pros uh, have all of their stuff popped and jacked because they'd use like, passwords, like, you know, password one or some other thing. Or, you know, in some cases, like, they, they'd had death threats or Molotovs or uh, there was a guy I used to work with who had uh, private investigators sent after him because he was digging into adware vendors. So I just, I just you know, I'd, I'd kind of sit down and sort of creatively write up some of this stuff of an evening and think, oh, I wonder if that happened, this would work. And it was, so I had, like, the bare bones of this there. But the, the reason this thing is also named after that Batman story is because uh, that, that came out 2008-ish, kind of fortuitous for me, really. Um, that, that was all about what happens when, basically, Batman is bested, what happens when the bad guys haven't beat. And the, the short, slightly less crazy version than the actual story is that he, he created a, a backup identity to, to save himself uh, and basically made them all dance like puppets for a while before you know, slamming the hammer down. So that, that kind of spurred me on in a weird way to finish all this stuff off. Um, but it was only really set out and able to you know, be deployed uh, probably two, three months before all of this actually kicked off for real. Any more? Okay, cool. Well, thank you for coming.